and welcome. This is Rick Baxter with Cost Control Software. I'm going to do a little demonstration and probably a little training here as well on customer deposits for Microsoft Dynamics NAV. Now I'm going to be showing it in the 2013 release 2, the R2 release, but it's available in uh, previous versions as well. Uh, before I actually start into the software, I want to run through and it'll just take a minute here and Sorry, yeah, we've got to kind of review the workflow a little bit, and then I'm going to go into the live software. The customer deposits for Microsoft Dynamics NAV is really broken into two parts. There's deposits on account. So if you receive a deposit on a customer's account and then want to later apply that invoice to the uh, various invoices, you can do that. Or you can be more specific and do a deposit on order, which is a very specific deposit on a very specific order. That's the one that's a little more tougher. And so that's the one I'm going to show in the demonstration today. So we're going to look at deposits on order. Here's the workflow. It's 10 basic steps. Kind of follow me down through this if you would. Move this up on your screen. The workflow is as follows. So number one is a new order is received. So you're going to get an order from a customer and you will then enter that sales order into your system, but don't release it to shipping yet. So just get the, the new sales order entered. That's the first step. You'll typically then send an order confirmation to the customer, thanking them for their order, obviously. And if deposits are required, we have modified the order confirmation with the ability to have a deposit request shown on that order confirmation. So that is sent to the customer. I'll show you that here in just a moment. Step four is you kind of wait for the deposit to be received. You kind of wait, 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 and then eventually it shows up. And so when the deposit is received, you enter that as a deposit on the order on the sales order header. Pretty straightforward. You simply check off the a deposit entry, uh, that it is a deposit entry on the deposit tab. You check off the, um, well, you enter the uh, document number, like the check number. So check number 472 and then the amount of the deposit, that's a credit amount on their account. So it goes in as a credit amount and then uh, that will um, get applied or basically applied to that uh, very specific sales order. So now what you're going to do is you're going to then um, to uh, release it. Okay, so the sales order is approved and it can now be released to shipping. When you do the releasing step, there's a button you check to record that it's released. That's standard nav field. The release action also makes the, cus the cash receipt entry for you in the cash receipts journal. So it automatically just creates the cash receipts entry. I'll show you this one when we go into the live software. And then you do the normal rest of the steps. The product is shipped uh, by the shipping department, either full or partial. And then the shipped not invoice report will show the alert that uh, this needs to go to billing so that we need to bill for the uh, invoice or the amount that's been shipped. And then the billing department will post the sales order to generate the invoice. Now the invoice amount will show the amount of the um, sales order less the amount of the deposit. So it will only be the balance due depending on how much deposit you actually received. That's the workflow. Pretty straightforward. I hope this matches up with your workflow. Let's go through it live so you can see it in a live environment. Okay, let me move this out of the way and we'll just go through and just uh, do those steps. So I'm going to create a new sales order. Just click it right here, new sales order. I'll press enter. I'm going to do this fairly quickly because you can pause the video at any given time. Uh, you put in the customer. Of course, I'm going to use our famous Canon Group customer. The line item of what they're going to order. So let's say they want to order some side panels. So put some 70,000 side panels in here and we'll put in uh, let me put in uh, uh, 200 and at 70 so that's about a nine thousand dollar nine thousand four hundred sixty dollar order for the 200 side panels so what we want to do is now um, we're going to 
want to request, remember, we want to send an order confirmation. That's here, the order confirmation. But we want to send it with a deposit requested amount. So let's say we want $500. So I'm just going to put in 500 and if you need to calculate the value, you can enter that as well. So I enter $500 and now I can print the order confirmation. We'll print it with the company information on here. And you may want to format this to some other look and feel to the order. But I do want to point out right down here is deposit request of $500. So you've got the dollar amount and what he is purchasing or what they are ordering. But basically, this is an alert. In fact, you might even want to change this a verbiage to say like order confirmation or a deposit request or I've seen some people call it pro forma invoice. This is a pro forma invoice subject to this deposit request. You may want to move deposit request up here big and bold on the header. You can design the document any way you want. Okay, notice deposit applied right here. There is none yet. We will eventually apply some deposit or partials. Well, we're going to apply this $500. Okay, so let's close out of the order. So that is uh, kind of the second step there. Actually, that's the third step. Now we just kind of wait to get the check from the customer, right? So we kind of waiting on the check. We're going to scroll. Let me scroll my screen up just a little bit here for you. And now the check comes in. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to record the checks uh, been received. So I simply come in and I check off the deposit entry amount here and I put in their check number. So let's say they gave us check, da, 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 put that in. And then the uh, we actually got the credit amount of $500 as we expected. So I'm going to enter that amount. And that's all I really have to do now is enter those three. And so now this sales order is basically approved to be uh, sent over to the shipping department because we've got our deposit that was required to be able to ship um, this. Now, you could even put, I just thought about this, if it's a totally prepaid, you could put in here the requested amount could be the amount of, of the, the sales order. If it's a 100% prepaid order, you could put in the amount here and request that amount. And then that's what they pay. And now we can release it. So there's a couple different ways you could process this. Um, but let's release it to uh, the shipping department. So I hit release. That changes the status up here to released. And remember, I said that also makes the entry. Let's just go verify. I'm going to go over here to the cash receipts journal to our deposits. And that makes that entry in here, deposit on sales order 1002. That's the one we were working on for the Canon Group and it's for that $500. Now typically the person that manages the cash receipts is going to be entering other cash receipts as well and then will post this amount so that that shows on the customer's account. So let's just do that. I'm going to post this journal and then I think uh, it's successful. So let's just go now take a quick peek at the customer card because I want you to see one little thing on the customer card as well. So here is the Canon Group's card. Notice we now have a separation between the balance dollars and the deposit dollars. So the deposit amount, there's that $500, and it's drillable into a new deposits entry area. So we have the new deposit kind of entry separate from the a ledger entry, customer ledger entries. I didn't want to commingle the two there. Notice it's not closed yet. We'll close it once the, it's been uh, fully applied. Okay, so that is that first step. Let's go back and now kind of finish up the process. So the shipping department now has the order, so they're going to come back here. Let's go back to our sales order list. Okay, so now I come back to my sales orders. I just go to my approved sales orders. Here it is right here on my approved list. We're ready to now record the shipment. So I'm going to kind of put on the hat of the shipping uh, clerk. And I'm now, because it's been released, so now I can um, go ahead and ship this. So I'm just going to post the shipment. 
okay, which records this and that completes that little step. So there's some little steps in here that you follow. Now, if, if you're in a smaller business and you do all these steps in, in one pass, you can do it, but I just wanted you to kind of see it kind of broken out into more individual steps. Okay, then I'm going to go into my ship not invoiced documents, and now it's going to show up over here. Okay, so based on, on the stacks, I could either do it from the stacks like here, uh, shipped uh, not invoiced things like that but I'm just going to go ship not invoiced here is the document and so now this you want to keep this list obviously very short because these are things that are shipped and you are ready to do your billings against this so now we simply come here ship not invoiced and there's a report available for this as well and we want to just uh, go ahead and bill the customer so here's the quantity invoice now I could do partials but in this uh, demonstration we're going to keep it real simple so I'm going to let's see a couple things I want to show you here I'm going to go ahead and post this and I notice I, I'm not having to go back down here into this uh, to the deposit entry and there are several other things that we can do we can make corrections if we need to we can record partials of other deposits I'm just showing the deposit uh, a deposit on order in this demonstration so now let's go ahead and post so I'm just I'm going to simply post and we'll ship and in, we've actually shipped so I'm going to just invoice at this stage and that clears that one out now the customer owes the money right so if I go to uh, Canon Group uh, account let's go in here notice the deposit balance is now zero again on Canon Group although I can drill down and shows me kind of a history of all the deposits this one now is closed okay it's been basically applied and so now if I look at my invoices let's see if we can just do it this way I'll drill down here is there's that order 1002 for the nine thousand dollars and if it all worked right yeah so nine thousand nine hundred and thirty three dollars was the amount notice the remaining amount is nine thousand four thirty three because the deposits been applied Now I could have put in a larger deposit amount if I needed to and in fact if we actually uh, print the invoice let's just uh, see if we can navigate here to the uh, let me open up this document I'll just double click it uh, open up this invoice navigate to it bear with me just a second while it's counting the records because I do want you to see what it looks like on the um, invoice that the customer gets okay so here is the posted invoice and we'll just open that up so here's the side panels and if I go and print the document okay and we go company address and we'll preview this so you can see it on screen and so now here is the invoice that the customer gets uh, in fact let me just go um, yeah so he gets this invoice and there's the amount and where it is oh right there there's the deposits applied deposits applied five hundred dollars and there is the total due on this invoice it's basically reducing those deposits so uh, perfect it ran right through and that's the balance that was showing on the customers account so I hope you like customer deposits if you have uh, in more interest in uh, this granule uh, feel free to contact your local NAV reseller or call us direct here at cost control software and we'll be glad to assist you with any questions you might have thanks so much